how boring and monotone would our life look like without emotions, without love, without joy, but also without anger, sadness and anxiety. And even the so-called negative emotions like anxiety or depression are very important from an evolutionary standpoint because they can save our lives or they can tell us that it's time for a change. The only problem with emotions is that sometimes they can be false alarms. So sometimes we are extremely afraid, we have a lot of anxiety even though there is no real threat. Or sometimes we feel depressed even though from an objective point of view our life is almost perfect. And in these situations when emotions are overwhelming and they are false alarms, emotion regulation strategies come into play. And of course in psychology emotion regulation strategies have been investigated since decades. And therefore in today's episode I want to present to you two gigantic meta-analyses with all in all over 300 studies in which the effects of different emotion regulation strategies were analyzed and compared. So the first one is the meta-analysis by Webb and colleagues in which could be shown that over all these studies with thousands of participants the emotion regulation strategy of cognitive reframing which is at the heart of cognitive behavioral therapy at the heart of CBT was quite effective reappraising the emotion reappraising anxiety as excitement for example as an helpful excitement which helps you to be awake which helps you to be energetic which indeed can be very helpful if you have to give a speech, for example, or if you have a very important sport event, then it can be very helpful to have this extra push of excitement, which makes you a little bit more awake. But even more effective than a reappraisal of the emotion was a reappraisal of the situation. So when you are, for example, in a very specific situation, maybe you are at the street and somebody passes you and you have the impression that, well, he looked at me very evil, like I did something wrong to him, or maybe like he hates me. And in such a specific situation, it could be very helpful to find a reappraisal like, well, he probably did not look at me, or maybe he is looking that pissed because he really has to piss, or maybe he did shit into his underpants. And if you have this kind of reappraisal, you immediately feel much better. Another strategy that we don't see here in this graphic, but is also almost equally effective as cognitive reappraisal is changing the focus of your attention. So if you concentrate on something else, uh, instead of on your body feelings, instead of your anxiety, for example, or your sadness, if you just focus on something else, this as well can be quite effective. But what was most effective was a change in perspective. So imagine you are lying in this medical chair at the dentist and you see how the dentist drill is coming closer and closer and then the dentist begins to drill. And maybe this picture is quite distressing. But now change the perspective and do no longer experience the situation from your first person perspective but from a third person perspective. So watch yourself from a safe distance lying in this dentist chair. And all of a sudden, just by changing the perspective and because of this safe distance, you now probably feel that the same situation is no longer that threatening. And several studies could show that there is even a much faster shortcut to changing the perspective and it's in the way how you talk to yourself. So instead of saying, I am afraid, or I fear that the dentist drill could really hurt, instead talk to yourself like a friend would talk to you. So instead of saying I, just say you. Just say you are afraid. You are afraid that the dentist drill could hurt. And all of a sudden you will realize that you are no longer that much identified. You are no longer that much embodied in this situation but instead you have a little bit more distance. And a second very important factor is that when you talk to yourself in this way, your self-talk will become more positive, more motivating. You will tell yourself, well, you are afraid of the dentist drill, 
but don't worry usually it doesn't hurt that much and usually the anxiety is much stronger than the actual pain and if it's getting too painful you still can ask for more narcotics so changing your perspective can be really very effective but what does not really work is to suppress your emotions this could be shown in several studies in which a so-called rebound effect was observed which means that when you try to suppress your emotions it's like with a ball that you push under water it might work for a moment but after a time chances are that the ball comes back with more power than before so take a look for example at a study by Levitt and colleagues in which participants agreed to take part in a so-called CO2 challenge, which means that they agreed to inhale air with much more CO2 than usual. So in this air, there was 5.5% CO2, which when you inhale this air can lead to panic-like symptoms. And one group of the participants was told, try to suppress your emotions. Try not to feel it. Don't allow the anxiety to conquer your body. In another condition, participants were told the opposite. They were told, try to accept the emotions. So when the negative feelings come, let them go through your body. And the result of this study was that those participants who had tried to suppress the emotion later on really felt more anxiety and they also showed more avoidance behavior because when they were asked, would you do something like this again? They more often said, no, <laughs> no, I don't want to do something like this again. As interesting as this meta-analysis is, it's not really complete because some emotion regulation strategies are missing. Therefore, let's take a look at another meta-analysis by Aldau and colleagues, in which they took a look at the correlation between psychological disorders like depression, anxiety, substance abuse or eating disorders and emotion regulation strategies. And again, in this meta-analysis, it could be shown that cognitive reappraisal seemed to have a positive effect because it was correlated with less psychological disorders, just like problem solving, which in fact had an even bigger effect. And that's the reason why I wanted to show you the results of this meta-analysis as well, because here we also have the effect of problem solving, which of course is also a very effective emotion regulation strategy. So for example, if you're feeling sad because you have trouble with a friend, it of course can be very helpful to solve the problem, to talk to your friend and to reconcile. But this meta-analysis could also show that one of the worst emotion regulation strategies is rumination. Thinking about your problems all day long. Being in this endless loop of thoughts like what is wrong with me? Why does nobody like me? Should I have acted differently in this or that situation? And it's quite similar with avoidance behavior, which is also correlated with a higher pathopsychology, which of course is not surprising because when you feel anxiety, for example, and you avoid the situation, you can't make the experience that actually the situation is much more safe than you thought. And finally, just like in the meta-analysis from Webb and colleagues, Aldau and colleagues also found that the suppression of emotion seems to be quite problematic because it correlates with higher amounts of pathopsychology. That's it for today. If you want to know more about this topic, feel free to take a look at the books or take a look at the website. But of course, you can also give something back by sharing this episode or leaving a thumbs up. And maybe we will see you in the next episode.